I woke up in such a funk this morning. I can't really pinpoint it or like explain what it was, but just was a bit, ugh. and I think I had quite a um, sort of like a sensory overload in my head and couldn't really, I don't know, when that happens, it's almost like I've got too many thoughts in my mind and there's, I can't really like organize them all. And I was just at home and like, couldn't sit down and read, couldn't sit and watch something, couldn't really, I don't know, like my attention just couldn't be fully on something. So I thought the thing that's gonna fix this is going for a long run because long runs, actually even short runs, I can do this. It just allows thoughts to kind of flow in and out of my mind and just allows me to really process things that have been on my mind and think things through. Um, and then obviously the flow of endorphins really helps with the, the mood. So that was great, really enjoyed that. Um, last night we finished Severance. I cannot put into words, just like, at the end, Dean and I were just like, mouths wide open, just looked at each other and were like, what? If Apple TV don't pick it up for a second season, I'm gonna be livid. I might even have to personally write to Ben Stiller and be like, right, I'll commission your second season because it was incredible and has just left it on such a cliff, like couldn't be more of a cliffhanger. So um, yes, thoroughly look forward to the second season of that coming out if it does. I'm sure it will, it'd be mad for Apple TV not to. Um, some running reflections, I was just, as I was sort of winding down, thinking about, because I changed up my playlist, some of you may remember I said I just wasn't loving my playlist, so I changed it up a bit. Four songs that I loved on today's run. Um, Loaded by Primal Scream is always a great one, really nice upbeat one that makes me feel really happy when I'm running. Um, Head Over Heels by Tears For Fears is a really good one, and... Um, Britney Spears' Give Me More is also a great one because it really gives you that kind of like main character kind of sassy feel. And then the other one is, um, oh, I can't remember the song name now. Mini Ripperton. Is it Le Fleur? Um, that's a really good one if I'm struggling and I need something quite like um, intense to kind of pick me back up again. It's also a great one to end a run on because it is like... I just feel like I'm ending on such a high and I find I, I kind of run a bit faster when I'm listening to that towards the end of my run. So there's four running songs that I highly recommend if you are maybe stuck for songs as well. Um, what am I doing today? Um, I'm gonna pack for a trip that I'm going on tomorrow to celebrate my friend Abby's birthday and maybe spend some time in the garden now that the sun's come out and do a little bit of reading. Jump in! <laughs> Yesterday was such a nice day, a really, really nice way to celebrate a 30th. So Abby, whose birthday it was, hired a house out, I think we are in Leicester, or around that area, um, and then had catering. So there was tons of food throughout the day, and then her sister did a whole table of like cake selection, because her sister's an incredible baker. So there was loads of food throughout the day, and then there was... Like, you could hang out in the pool, you could chill out in the garden, you can go and have a massage upstairs. So it was very, very relaxed. It felt like a really nice way to celebrate a 30th that didn't feel like overly pressured because everyone was just like chilling out in different areas of the house or the garden or the pool, catching up. Um, 
very relaxing and Abby very kindly let me stay the night because for me the journey home is quite long so she was like don't worry about it just um you can just stay the night and then make your way home in the morning so I thought I'd start the morning with a, a swim because I'm quite tired so I thought maybe this will pet me up a little bit I feel very puffy um I might actually go in the sauna if it's switched on um but this is lovely the sun's like directly on the pool um and it's quite like the pool's not hot it's just like tiny tiny bit cool so it's kind of refreshing um so yeah i'm just living my best life for another 10 minutes and then i need to go and get ready because we have to be out of here uh in the next hour i think oh i had to really push through that one i find running in the evening or kind of like at the end of the day a lot more difficult I don't know what it is I think I just feel quite sluggish at the end of the day so running is kind of like the last thing I want to do I'm much more of a morning first activity of the day kind of runner but I was very restless today so I thought I'll go out for a nice evening run um, especially because the temp is perfect um don't worry I'm not going to talk about running for ages I just wanted to say another song that I've really enjoyed and I listened to twice on this run um, it's a song called Says by Nils Fram. It's like eight minutes long, which is great because it's the kind of song you can really zone out to. And that song, like it's not particularly fast tempo, it's quite ambient um, up until maybe like the last minute where it does build and build and build and then get quite intense at the very end. But um, it just does something to my brain and really helps me just kind of like zone out and keep a really nice pace and just feel really comfortable in my run um and yeah just an all-round really good running song so listening to that twice 16 minutes gone by in a flash um right i need to go home shower and then have dinner and just collapse on the sofa on my hair. It started about three weeks ago so I haven't really been using it for that long but I have to say I'm already noticing quite a difference in my hair. Noticing a massive difference in the way my hair dries naturally. It feels like much more of a consistent wave now rather than a kind of sporadic wave and I feel like I don't have to manipulate it as much with heat. I can kind of just slightly smooth out the root and then the rest is just fine. Like that is all natural. I feel like that's a very pleasing wave. Um, and also just noticing the the texture and the condition of my hair feels a lot better. The two products I'm using in particular are the um, Nourishing Hair Serum, which is a serum that you can put in every time you wash your hair, you just leave it in. And then the Bond Intense Moisture Mask, which is a mask that they recommend you do once a week. You apply it to damp hair and then leave it in for 10 minutes. Sorry, I've got hair in my mouth. Um, and then wash it out. So this is like a very, very intense mask that really gives your hair a lot of moisture. And then the serum is kind of like something that you can use in between masks to keep up the overall condition of the hair. Um, but yeah, very, very impressed. I am trying to grow my hair just a wee bit longer. This is the longest I've had my hair since I was about, I don't know, 10 or 11 maybe. I can't Whenever I try and grow my hair, I can't seem to get it past boob. It's like it just doesn't want to go past. And this is where I normally fall um, and end up getting it cut back into a bob. But because I've persevered for so long, I'm like, nope, I'm going to keep going. Um, so I was hoping, I am hoping that in between trims, the Olaplex will help with the condition. And I am continuing to take the JS Health um, Hair and Energy. I don't know if they're doing anything. I feel like they are. Um, they're certainly not doing any harm, so I'll continue to take them in the hope that they will also 
um, kind of encourage a bit of hair growth um, and obviously just continuing to use as little heat as possible on my hair but yeah it's just it just won't go past come on also I think is that side longer no it's just because I'm standing on the wrong yeah it just never goes past the boob never it's that really annoying in between weather where it's too cold to wear just a t-shirt but it's too hot to go for a full-on coat um I kind of enjoy this sweet spot though because sometimes you can wear like a jumper and shorts or you can have like a trench and sandals on. Anyway, two options that I can't decide between this morning. So the first is this cropped wool jacket from Feminique. It's got such a nice neckline because it doesn't have any lapels so it's a really clean v-neck and then has four buttons. Feminique is a Korean brand. I quite like them because I don't shop them regularly because the customs is quite high. Um, so if I do, I kind of do like a bulk order of a few, you know, like a lot of pieces. Um, but all the proportions are really good for me. Like things, jackets that are meant to be cropped are actually cropped and trousers fit really nicely. Um, but they're one of those brands that only does like two sizes in each of their items. Um, so this actually fits me properly as it should. Like it cuts me off in the correct place as opposed to most crop jackets where they kind of finish here on my hip, whereas I want them to actually be above the hip. So that is option number one, um, paired with vintage uh, Levi's 501s and then my new sandals from the row. And then second option. Okay, I know a lot of you are probably gonna be screaming um, at me right now, like, Brittany, no, you always wear long coats. Why are you wearing a long coat? Hear me out. So this is like a blazer coat. It's lightweight it's wool but it's more of like a summer weight wool so it's super lightweight and flowy um i've had this for about over a year now it's from house of dagmar but really struggled to style it for quite a while um i think the key is keeping things quite simple quite casual and relaxed underneath it's actually a really good one in the evening to put over more formal looks or dresses but i struggled to make it more sort of like daytime friendly for such a long time and then this morning i was just sending a video to my friend neelam because um, she's interested in buying this coat also so I was just showing her what it's like on me size wise just put it over this and I was like this this is a look I quite like this oh do you know what I think I'm gonna go for the long coat today because it might rain and then tomorrow I'll go short because I'll probably just wear this again tomorrow I'm literally not really doing anything of interest this week so I will just be back and forth from the studio so yeah that is that is what I will do. I will wear the long version, the long coat today, and then the short one tomorrow. Right, another day in another attempt to dress for this very difficult weather. Apologies for the iPhone footage. I realised I've left my vlog camera in my studio this morning. Um, yeah, it's muggy today, but it's that very fine. There's a very fine mist of rain in the air that doesn't really warrant like a, a raincoat because I'm not going to particularly get wet. I'll just maybe feel slightly damp. When I go outside um so yeah I'm, I'm just not going to bother with like a waterproof element because I just don't really think I need it and I'll take an umbrella anyway this blazer I've had for about I'd say four years it's the it's just like a real classic Arquette one that they do every year or a variation of every year and when I first got it I was obsessed with it and wore it all the time and then kind of just went off it because I felt like realistically it it wasn't a good fit on me um but I think because the sleeves are too long, I think all I need to do is just take it to the tailor and just I've folded that sleeve up and just get the sleeve taken up like an inch and it would make all the difference. It is a very oversized, oversized fit, which I'm prepared to embrace. Um, I know I said in, was it like my first wardrobe wish list about how I really don't like how oversized blazers are so long line, but I think I'm just gonna embrace this one rather than get it shortened. Although I could, oh, 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 that would be a bit nicer if it was just a little bit, maybe a wee bit shorter. Mm. I'm going to take this to the tailor over the next few days, maybe, and see what he says, because he could just, just keep the curve and just take it up a touch. Oh, that would be a bit nicer, wouldn't it, if it just was a little bit. Anyway, um, I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, Arquette t-shirt as well, just the standard women's crew neck one, um, cos belt, so, so old this belt now. And then Studio Nicholson Ruth jeans and um, 
the row Gaia sandals. I picked up three new books yesterday. I don't know what it is. I always feel compelled to buy books in groups of three. Never one or two. It just always in a, is in a group of three. So a few weeks ago, I received an email from someone called Olivia. Apologies if my memory is not serving me well and your name <laughs> isn't Olivia, but she sent me a lovely email with a list of books that she thought I might enjoy. One of them being this, Territory of Light by Yuko Shishima. Thank you so much for that email, by the way. I have added all of them to my Goodreads to read list. Ravensmith's Men, because Ravensmith is possibly the funniest person I follow on Instagram. So I have high hopes for this and I cannot wait to read it. And then The Little Friend by Donna Tartt. This was one of those books that was, you know, like how in some bookshops, books are displayed front facing. This was one of them and it immediately caught my eye because it's obviously very similar to the cover of a secret history and I enjoyed that book so much so I do want to read more of Donna Tartt's writing and this one sounds quite interesting. So I think at the moment I'm reading Elias Grace by Margaret Atwood. Once I finish that I think I'm going to read this as kind of like a palate cleanser I guess and then move on to this. So yeah those will probably be my next two reads I reckon. I described my look to Dean this morning as a coastal grandmother and he proceeded to say, ah, okay, Nanny Sproggins off to the beach then. <laughs> I'm into it though. Um, the weather's so nice today, so I'm trying to get some more wear out of this waistcoat that I recently bought. Um, I think it's a linen blend, definitely feels like it is. This is from Cos and then Margaret Howe Belt, which I'm pretty sure is still knocking about on their website maybe. Um, mango skirt so i'm just going to change the exposure on this so you can see it's a bit better mango skirt which i bought in a couple of sizes up sorry i didn't buy this that's a lie mango gifted this to me when i was in spain got it a couple of sizes bigger though and then had it ever so slightly nipped in at the waist so that it sits just a bit like slouchier and then the row jerry sandals <laughs> Borders. Currently just uh, in the garden centre and I've stumbled across these extremely chic gardening shoes. I'm getting them. I need shoes for gardening. Oh, I mean, I've got my Crocs. But these are less good. These are so... They, <laughs> they look really cool. <laughs> don't I look like I've got a sort of lizard foot? They look better on you. I think it's because you've got socks on. Yeah. Maybe... And jeans. Maybe it's all about the, the sockless, yeah. <laughs> okay, garden centre hall. We have a shingle patch in the garden that we're getting rid of because it's just kind of, it just looks a bit odd. It's not very attractive and we thought it'd be much nicer if we added some more flowers. So these are our flowers of choice. Lavender, smells great, it's a classic, attracts lots of bumblebees, can't go wrong with it really. This orange one, we actually already have a yellow version of this in our garden and it's probably one of my favourite flowers in the garden because it flowers for a long time and when it's in full bloom it's quite a big plant as well. So an orange version would be very nice. This is called a Jim Princess Juliana. i not pronouncing that correctly. This yellow one's quite similar as well in sort of like shape I guess. This is called a Trolleyus Lemon Queen. How beautiful those flowers and then the last one you can actually smell before you see it because it has such a strong vanilla smell to it this is called uh nemesia is that what it is nemesia whistly vanilla also got these seed balls so these are balls that you can just scatter over soil you don't have to you know like bury them or plant them or anything you just scatter them over soil and eventually some wild flowers should germinate so i've got two different types the first being the cloud meadow mix which is a mix of uh, white flowers. And then this one is the shade mix. I'm looking forward to the, using this one the most because I've got a very pesky shady patch in the garden that I can't really seem to get anything to sort of survive in. So this will be a mix of flowers that are suitable for a shaded area. So that's my afternoon sorted, a very calming, tranquil afternoon of gardening. Obviously the thing that you want to see the most though is obviously my um, gardening shoes. 
$8.99. I mean, brilliant. Absolutely, oh, that's really bad lighting. <laughs> Just got back from a really rubbish run. It was so hot, I was extremely dehydrated. And now that I'm running more regularly, I need to remember that I need to be drinking more water as well, not just on the day, but just in general throughout the week, I need to be drinking more water to keep myself hydrated. And I have not been doing that, so I was so dehydrated on my run. I was tired, my legs hurt, yeah, all in all, not a good run. However, I have come back home to discover something absolutely beautiful in the garden. Look at this. So the first poppy is flowered. I always like to put my hand next to them to kind of show the scale of them because they're pretty big. Very impressive. And the timing of this is perfect. We have a barbecue today. So I feel like this one is flowered just in time to show off to all of our guests. I love this plant so much. This is the second year it's flowered now. I've had it for three years. The first year it didn't flower because we planted it just after its flowering season. The first year it probably had about four or five flowers on it and then this year it's like doubled in size I'd say there's easily like 10 or 11 heads hiding amongst this plant so when the whole thing starts to flower it's going to be so beautiful Killing it. Thanks guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You're right. You're more than welcome. It's a real treat. Right, day two, poppy check. Are we going to have a new flower? Or is it still going to be just one singular one? Oh, yes! Look at that. Could I just do a whole vlog dedicated to this beautiful plant? I mean, yeah, looking good, isn't it? This one's going to go tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I reckon tomorrow morning that one will go, and then there'll be a lovely, yeah, arc. a lovely arc of just three heads, and then over the next week, I reckon. The other ones that are lower down will start to flower. Yeah, this one's starting to flower a bit more. And then this yellow one here that I only planted the other day, I think is already doing quite well. Yeah, I need to cut that one off. Yeah, I'll deadhead that. And then this one will start to flower soon as well. And it'll be a, this a one beautiful white corner. That we thought was dead. Yeah, that one seems one, to be coming back. One corner's come back. Hello, from the south of France. Last week Barcelona, this week south of France. Who am I? What is my life right now? I realise this is very out of the blue and I need to give this some context so I didn't even pre-warn you as a viewer that I was coming to the south of France. Um, mainly because it was all like top secret. So the previous clip you might have seen was me with the Chanel visitor badge. So I'm in south of France with Chanel to witness a once in a lifetime experience. I'm in um, grass, grass, grassy. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it in French accent because it will be just embarrassing. Um, but I'm here to witness the rose harvest that happens once a year in which they harvest the roses <laughs> ready for the fragrances that Chanel make and I have been invited to witness this. Major imposter syndrome right now, but I'm gonna try and act as cool, calm, and as confident as possible. I'm not even gonna question why they invited me, um, and just act like, yep, yeah, this is fine, this is totally fine, and try and just contain my excitement because I can't quite believe I'm here. I've never been to the south of France, which is another reason why I'm absolutely losing my mind right now. Um, the view from my terrace is beautiful i'll show you it in just a moment i'm gonna sit down Ooh. oh no that's that's some bad light um i've got a couple of hours spare in my in my room um 
I'm gonna get ready and then just take some photos of my outfit. I'll try and show you my outfit because I have been allowed to borrow a Chanel handbag. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually like worn I don't think I've even touched a Chanel handbag, let alone worn one. Actually, maybe I've touched... Have I touched one? <laughs> anyway, definitely haven't worn a Chanel handbag. Um, so, uh, just another reason why I'm going to lose my mind and I'm going to guard that with my life because I have to give it back after this trip. Um, and obviously the weather. The weather is just glorious. Um, yeah. It's not... Not bad right now, not too shabby. So this is one of the views. So right now the sun is setting behind me, so I'm hoping tomorrow morning that is where the sun will rise. And then to the other side of my terraced area, check out that view. Just simply stunning. <laughs> Oh, how the tables have turned. I'm home now, no longer living the glamorous life in the south of France with Chanel. Instead, I'm sat at home with excruciating period pains, attempting to do some work. Yes, I'm in cream shorts on a cream chair, <laughs> um, but it's, it's just not happening. I'm feeling so low energy this morning. Um, I realise I didn't do a great job of vlogging the previous two days, mainly because I was concentrating so much on capturing uh, footage on my phone so I could create a good reel and then neglected to pick up my vlog camera so I will link that reel in the description box if you are interested in seeing a little bit more of the May rose harvest kind of seeing how that process works a little bit behind the scenes at the factory um, and just beautiful southern France scenery basically the weather was just glorious um, also, the trip was a real test for my hay fever tablets. Didn't really think it through. And then we got to the rose fields and I was just kind of losing it in my mind, thinking, uh, what am I doing? This is not a good idea. Um, but managed to get through that quite unscathed. Just minor sneezing and a little bit of um, tingly feeling on my face. But yeah, those hay fever tablets that the doctor gave me are really doing their job. Um, this morning, however, I've just woken up. I don't look too bad now, she says. I mean, very puffy, very itchy this morning. Um, but this time next week, I will have had my um, eye consultation. So hopefully I will have some answers or kind of like a plan on how we're going to figure out what is going on with my eyes and my mouth at the moment. Um, Today is an admin day. I am just replying to all of the emails that I neglected over the past couple of days and planning content for the next two weeks because Dean and I are going on holiday on the 1st of June. Yes, 1st of June we're going away. So I just want to get everything, anything I need to get filmed, get it all planned um, and just have everything wrapped up before we go on holiday so we can fully have a proper holiday together. Um, and then once I've done this, I kind of fancy sitting in the garden and having some lunch and finishing my book. So I've got about 100 pages left of Elias Grace. And I have to say, um, I'm not enjoying Elias Grace, but because I'm this far in, so close to the end, and actually do want to find out what happens in the end, I will be finishing it. But it hasn't been, certainly hasn't been a book that I've enjoyed. Um, I really need to learn to put books down if they're not in, if I'm not enjoying them but I'm really stubborn and I just keep reading I'm like nope nope I can't put down a book I have to finish a book I 
another uh, very uneventful, boring day of admin and house stuff. Um, this humidity is not doing my hair much good. <laughs> um, there was a storm last night, but it didn't quite clear the air, so the, the air is just hanging very close and low today. And I'm thinking my outfit of choice is not very practical. I can feel myself getting a bit <sighs> clammy already, sweaty top lip. Um, I woke up this morning and was like, right, I'm gonna have a day of just sitting in like jumper and joggers, getting my work done and getting all my house jobs done. But in reality, like I always think that kind of sounds like a nice thing to do, but in reality, I just find it hard to be productive when I'm not kind of like properly dressed. So I've decided to put on some slightly smarter clothes. Um, Cos waistcoat again. I think I've shown this several times in this vlog already. This is a very outfit heavy vlog, isn't it? Um, have I got a stain on that already? Uh, um, House of Dagmar trousers. These are either the Val Valentine or Valentina trousers. They're wool. This is why I was saying um, I'm a bit worried about the kind of practicality of this outfit. I might overheat. They're a lightweight wool, but they're still wool nonetheless. Such a good trouser though. I've had these for two years now and they're probably like my most worn kind of slouchy black tailored trousers. And then sandals um, are from Grenson. They sent me these a couple of weeks ago and I've got to say that these are probably the most comfortable sandals I have ever worn. Like, I've not had a single issue with them from the get-go, and I truly 100% mean this. There's not been a single blister, there's been no rubbing, there has been zero discomfort whatsoever. As soon as I put them on, they were fine, which is practically unheard of with summer sandals, especially when they're leather. Um, so if you're on the hunt for a fisherman sandal that's not chunky, because these are quite, these are more of like a very classic, um, fisherman sandal as opposed to the chunky ones that we're seeing around a lot at the moment then these could be the ones for you they also come in black the the style name escapes me but as always links in description box and they are also available for men um i have considered buying a pair for dean as well because he wants a pair of summer sandals um so good to know for any male watchers out there these are available for men and then a uh, bag of choice when I do leave the house is going to be this St. Agony bag because it expands greatly when you stuff stuff in it so I can just, just sh Apologies for subjecting you to my sweaty face so many times over the course of one vlog, but I am running a lot at the moment. I've set myself a goal of 25 kilometers a week. It used to be 30, but I think 30 is pushing it. So 25 feels a bit more manageable. Um, so yeah, it means I'm running a lot and I'm reflecting a lot when I'm running. Um, I feel like, remember these reflections are my own opinion. I know there are some people that feel like running is akin to purgatory or some sort of hell and absolutely hate it and I totally get that there are days when I detest it um, but there's real power in a run when everything kind of slots together and it feels good and in a way those I mean those runs are obviously my favorite but they overwhelm me in a way and make me feel quite emotional today I went and ran around uh, the lake at the university here it's my favorite place to run um, but I just haven't been there for ages, I don't know why. I went there this morning and I started to get a bit emotional. I think the music I was listening to was lovely, the weather's lovely, it's really quiet because I've come out quite early on a Sunday morning. Um, and everything just felt so perfect and I just got a bit emotional. I didn't cry or anything, but sometimes that's the power that running has for me. It makes me feel so kind of overwhelmed with like positive emotions. That it gets a bit much. Um, I did listen to the Harry Styles album once through so I can't really give any comments, any like concrete opinions, not even a first opinion I don't think. I think actually running to an album that I've not listened to before maybe wasn't the best because I found it difficult to kind of like, I don't know, absorb the songs properly and also had no idea what the songs were called because I obviously had my phone strapped to my arm. So I can't remember which songs it, that I liked the most. Um, However, I do have another song that I think is a great song for running to. It is by Orbital and it's called Halcyon and On and On. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's used 
at the very end scene of Mean Girls. I don't know how I remember that. I think, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it takes a little while to get going. Probably takes like 45 seconds to get going. But it's a very, very nice one to listen to when the weather's good and maybe you're not... Like I listen to it when I'm not particularly on a difficult run or like a fast run. When I'm just on a quite a gentle run and feeling all like, ooh, this is lovely, that's a good one. Um, but yeah, I've got two more kilometres to go of this run, actually. I just decided to stop mid-run while I had some thoughts in my head. As I was just thinking about running as it, this run was coming to the end, I thought, do you know what? This one has been absolutely um, glorious. I tell you what, this waistcoat is getting a lot of wear this week. Um, Dean and I are, sorry I'm just playing around with the exposure, Dean and I are spending the day in London today because I'm redeeming my birthday present which is a ticket to, I say a ticket, tickets for both of us obviously, to go to, sorry this camera, I feel like I'm always having to fiddle with the settings because the exposure is so wrong. Anyway, uh, tickets to go to the Tate to see the Cornelia Parker exhibition and then we'll probably just do a wee bit of wandering around and maybe some holiday shopping because Dean would like some, what do you want, new t-shirts? A little t-shirt top up and a vest top up. Um, so yeah, Cos waistcoat again. Um, this is an Arquette tank top. Margaret Howe belt, which I've kind of just done this little tie thing with because this, these trousers, they're Margaret Howe as well. There's no belt loop on the side here. So annoyingly, that just, it kind of annoys me because it, it's a very small pedantic issue um, so yeah done that um, as I said Margaret Howe trousers and the Grimps and Sandals again can't tell if what I'm trying to create today is hideous or actually quite great. I mean, sometimes I wake up and have a real clear vision of what it is I want to wear. This morning is not one of those mornings. I am stuck again in that weird kind of like, it's 16 degrees but it's gonna rain and it's really hot and muggy. So I can't really wear an open toe shoe. Um, don't particularly want to wear a dress. Uh, too warm to wear a coat, ugh. Um, yeah, this, this is not, these are two different shoes, despite how similar they look. Yes, 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 we all know I have a terrible shopping habit still to fill a void. Um, what, what can I do? The belt's too big, that needs sorting. This doesn't feel right, something's off. I don't know if it's the turn up on the trousers, it's just a bit, maybe it's the belt. I think I need to start from scratch again. Right, this feels marginally better. I'm still not loving it, but I don't really have time to be doing this this morning. I just need to put on something that I feel good in, um, but it doesn't have to be fancy or anything. I'm literally just going to go to my studio to edit videos and do some work. Why am I getting so in my head about what to wear today? I think it's because I'm anxious about other things and I'm then projecting my anxiety onto Simple tasks like getting dressed. Anyway, um, yeah, this 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 feels better. I, I quite like this now that I'm looking at it more. The t-shirt's navy. Um, I feel like I need to point this out any time I wear navy because it always looks black on camera, but the fact that it's navy makes such a subtle difference against the white as opposed to black and white. Now, navy and white for me is just like chef's kiss, especially with brown accessories. It's got a very sort of classic, slightly preppy feel to it. Um, so yeah, navy Arquette t-shirt, uh, brown Margaret Howe belt. These are some vintage trousers from an Instagram vintage store. Oof, that has gone really bright all of a sudden. Called Sentaku, which I will leave in the description box. They're kind of like a very lightweight cotton. There might be an element of linen in there just because they feel so lightweight and they are slightly um, opaque, just a wee bit. So I think I'm going to have to change my 
underwear possibly oh actually it might be oh no yeah I need to change my underwear um and then brown margella tabby brogues yeah okay this this is gonna be the final look with a blazer just a navy blazer over the top and i'm literally just gonna get a tote bag and just shove all the stuff i need for the day in a tote bag Okay, this seems like a good time to sign off the vlog. This vlog's been filmed over the course of like two and a bit weeks, so it, I have no idea how jumbled the footage is gonna be, and at this point I have no idea what length the vlog is at, but it feels like a good time to sign off. And I'm gonna sign off by quickly sharing that I have started reading Raven Smith's Men. Um, I would go as far as to say that this book is iconic. I desperately wish that Raven was my friend. His wit, his humour, the way he observes, things and then writes about those observations is just brilliant it's such a funny book it's the first book that I've like properly spent time like dog earring and um highlighting bits just because of the way he observes things is just so spot on um there was many bits that I wanted to be able to refer back to so I've highlighted a lot of pages um and actually kind of like circled bits I never draw on books but this book I was like I don't want to forget these things so I've done a lot of underlining um yeah, it's a brilliant book. Raven is a very, very funny man and it's definitely the type of book that I will be kind of passing around to friends and sharing with as many people as I can. Um, if you, I feel like if you're a big fan of David Sedaris, you'll enjoy the way Raven observes things and writes about them. Um, after this vlog, there will be a wardrobe wish list coming up. Then there will be a video titled along the lines of 10 mono... Monochrome doesn't mean black and white, does it? Monochrome actually means one. Ten black and white outfits for warmer weather. Uh, something along those lines, and it will be ten outfits for warmer weather. But, I mean, the title's self-explanatory. Um, and then there will be maybe one more vlog, and then there'll be a bit of a break. I mean, and I know there's always breaks in my uploading. I'm very sporadic, but there'll be quite a significant break because Dean and I will be on holiday for two weeks. Part of that holiday will be a family holiday, and then we're going to have our own, like a, a holiday with just us two, and then we're going to Primavera. So I will not be editing during that time. I might film elements of it. I won't film the holiday, um, the family bit, maybe the Primavera bit. Um, we shall see. But then some video type footage, some vlog type footage, sorry, will resume maybe like mid-June. Anyway, uh, until the next video, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.